All right, looks like we're started. That's great. I'll just do a quick introduction. Thank you everyone for uh, being flexible and showing up today. Looks like we have a little around 30 uh, students, parents, and even some staff members. And looks like more are gonna be joining throughout. This is a recording and it will be up um, on our website um, to help answer any questions uh, for um, my name is Evan Powell. Uh, I am the principal, and I am actually very excited that we have so many senior activities um, for our students this year. And uh, it's just been great the last couple months with students on campus, athletics, clubs, uh, and everything in between. So I'm excited for the next five weeks and what um, our seniors get to experience where just a few months ago, we weren't sure we were going to be able to do this. So uh, to get started, uh, the elephant in the room has to do with graduation and um, everything in that. So I know we have some questions which Heidi will read off to me, but I do have a few points I would like to discuss and uh, kind of go through. first and foremost. Graduation has to be in two ceremonies um, due to roughly 800 students um, in our senior graduating and the occupancy we're able to have under the county guidance is six feet of spacing. So we had to do two equal ceremonies um, to work. And in case you haven't seen the guidelines on graduation events, uh, they are state required. There has to be two hours in between events um, and we have to keep six feet of spacing and we do that, uh, we're looking at 1,500 to 2,000 individuals um, at each graduation. And I'll be honest, we just need space. We need time. And there's no way we can cram two evening ceremonies in in the guidelines given to this, us by the state. And with six feet of separation, uh, you know, we need a time. And so that's why there's a 1030 a.m. and a 6 p.m. So I know a lot of families are asking, is there room in the 6 p.m. if they were unable to select it? The answer is no. Unfortunately, there is, there is no room available in the 6 p.m. graduation ceremony. And that's strictly because of the six feet uh, of requirement. Uh, if space gets relaxed uh, between now and graduation, uh, there will be a lot of communication about what we can or cannot do. Um, to allow um, for more individuals, uh, that's all we need. If we can have less space, then uh, we are able to accommodate uh, more students or possibly even have one ceremony. But because of the six feet, we had to do two. And you look at what it takes to run a graduation event, uh, the time necessary in between, um, you know, rearranging the chairs, students and families leaving campus, uh, we needed to uh, also weather. Uh, we had to be thoughtful in uh, what could work. And I understand a lot of families may not be able to make the 1030, but uh, knowing that we had six weeks notice, uh, we are hoping that this will be able to work out for everyone um, and not um, be a hindrance. So graduation is an important aspect of all K-12 schooling probably one of the most important days of, of any young person's life um, and family. And so we want our students and families to be able to attend. Uh, I know I was asked in my first ever uh, PTSA meeting um, as principal of Doherty Valley to make sure, you know, I lead with what American school looks like and um, give them importance and be honest. And I will be honest and I will say graduation is extremely important and we have to make sure that that can happen. Unfortunately, the guidelines given to me for this year has made it very challenging, but I am so thrilled to be able to offer two ceremonies for our students and families. And so just to reiterate for those coming in, 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. There is no room in the 6 p.m. ceremony for anyone to transfer in. Um, that's due to the guidelines um, outlined by the state. Should the guidelines change, I am flexible and I will be looking at that and what we can do to support our students and families. Next uh, item I have to talk about is our senior ball. Uh, one of the biggest questions I have received are about guest passes. There are no guest passes allowed. So uh, we will 
um, only have our senior class uh, students who um, attend venture school um, or Del Amigo and are resident of Doherty Valley. And this is their feeder school, their home school. Uh, they are allowed to attend. So just so everyone knows that, I want to be clear. Um, anyone who Doherty is the home school is able to attend um, our senior masquerade. And uh, it is one of the parts of the registration about the COVID-19 waiver form that will be sent out the week before and uh, students will be able to bring that with them or uh, there's a digital copy we'll have. So as part of the check-in process, uh, we'll make sure every family has signed off that um, our normal return to school acknowledgement um, that athletes have had to sign, uh, students returning to campus have had to sign, um, and a lot of students have already done it. So it may be redundant, but at least we'll have it centralized. One question also has come up multiple times about uh, masquerade is dancing. Yes, students can dance, but you have to stay six feet apart. So I just wanna remind everyone that our county and our state has a six feet of separation um, it is required. That's why we're doing things a little bit different. That's why we're in the stadium. Uh, there will be the silent disco. I know we have a performer coming, uh, but it is required that students remain distant um, while they are there. We're doing the best we can when students are on campus right now. I know it is challenging, but knowing that there will be several hundred students in an area that can hold quite a few, uh, there's plenty of room for everyone to be distant. And it is required, and I will be honest, um, if students don't follow, we'll give the warning, and if they continue not to follow uh, the directions, then they will be asked to leave. And so I want everyone to know that our safety and health is most important, and so masking and distance is absolutely uh, required um, and to happen. So I just want to be upfront and transparent that we will have a blast, we will have fun, it's gonna be exciting for our seniors, but the distancing and masking absolutely has to happen. So students will respect that um, so they can enjoy the night um, with their friends um, and make this a memorable moment. And, and then lastly, uh, senior checkout uh, will be really the last week and a half of school. Uh, students will receive their tickets um, for graduation uh, based on meeting senior checkout. And so every student practically weekly would be getting emails if they owed any books or any fines. And so that should start getting taken care of. Those should be dropped off. Um, if you still have a lock from, you know, when we had lockers, uh, make sure you turn that in. And so really start looking around your house and taking care of, of that. So it makes the process for you at the end of the school year. And if you do not complete senior checkout, you will not get tickets for uh, the graduation ceremony. Um, and your diploma will be held until we complete that. So I just want to make sure we're clear that now's the time to start getting everything organized and planning uh, when the checkout will, uh, will take place. And as I mentioned this with the graduation tickets, I hope every family knows that it is the state guideline when I write that immediate household numbers only can actually mean that. Um, the state says there are no out of town, um, no out of state, um, individuals should be attending this graduation and only immediate household members should be coming to our campus. Uh, if there's a sibling and two parents, then that means that student should only be taking three tickets um, to come. And uh, we should not have someone from another state coming um, to campus. You guys can celebrate at your house, but we cannot have uh, individuals not part of the immediate household of a student um, coming to campus. Uh, this is outlined um, by the state of California in terms of uh, graduation ceremonies and the rules that we have to follow. So I hope everyone will respect and honor this so we can all stay safe um, and enjoy and have a good time. Um, so I want to be clear that I know I've received a few emails um, stating that there's out of town guests and you need more tickets. That will not happen. Um, and I am hoping everyone will respect that. Heidi, those were my points. Um, I am all ready for uh, the questions that were submitted uh, to you. Sure. So with respect to the graduation ceremony, both ceremonies will be live streamed, correct? And will we provide a link in advance for whether they're local in San Ramon, across the country, across the world, or in the stadium 
they could simulcast. Will we provide Correct. that link in advance? Yes. So we we have uh, contracted with a company to live stream both um, ceremonies. We're excited because I know we'll be professional um, and there's a lot of work going into it to make it um, pretty much like you're there. And I am actually going to be working on the link. We should have that up on our website uh, within the next week or two. I'm going to create just a quick little video so you know you you have the right link. And uh, that will be uh, sent out once that is set up um, and attached to our page. And yes, uh, no matter where you are, you'll be able to watch it. And I know with everyone spread out, graduation uh, setup will look differently uh, this next for this coming graduation. So if you're sitting kind of far away and you can't see, you will be able to pull it up on a device and, and be able to watch it. And it's like you're sitting only a few feet away. So we are looking forward uh, to this opportunity for families. So arguably the live stream will actually be better in the sense of you're not looking from the stands in the stadium, trying to see at a distance with my bad vision. Um, the video cameras will actually be right up there. So people may actually wanna do both if they have tickets, right? Correct, yes. Um, with respect to senior checkout, um, just confirming people, we've already published information in the newsletter um, from the librarian. People can start doing elements of that by returning textbooks and library books they no longer need, checking in. But otherwise, when will the specifics be available? Will that be the last week or two? Uh, our goal is by end of next week to summarize and finalize our kind of checkoff list. And then uh, our office manager, Mrs. Mattingly, will be sending uh, something out to our seniors um, first, second week of May. Um, so that way they can start seeing it. But in my email to seniors last week, um, it kind of gave the brief overview of what to expect, what to start getting ready, uh, be ahead on it. So that way it can get taken care of. Okay, and then people can continue to use the newsletter for the updated information. In fact, we're talking about separating the senior information to a separate newsletter just because it's getting too long. Um, Excellent. Uh, Mrs. Mattingly has also posted under the student tab on the home, on the DVHS website, a homepage for senior information. The senior checkout information will be published there as it becomes available. Um, Cap and gown pickup is in the newsletter and I believe it's also on that senior page coming up um, in May. And then the other question was the senior grad speaker, will they be speaking both in the morning and afternoon? How, how is that gonna work? Yes, so we will have two uh, senior speakers. One is our president of the senior class, Sarah, and we currently have open the uh, application uh, link that seniors received from me today uh, where they can essentially audition uh, through a video and submitting their speech up, up until uh, Sunday. And both speakers will have to be available at both ceremonies. Uh, we are not dividing it up. It will be the same individuals um, for each ceremony. Excellent. Um, next, the question is, will teachers be at graduation? And if so, does the student have any opportunity to choose which teacher announces their name? We are collecting responses from staff as we speak, and uh, I'm not sure how many are going to be there yet. I know traditionally uh, students have been able to select from anywhere from 40 or 50 uh, teachers who will be reading names. Unfortunately, it is not looking like that is going to happen this year. We have fewer teachers. Um, electing to read names. And so that opportunity may not be there. We are encouraged enough to be at both ceremonies. And so that way there, you know, can be, you know, the vision, the, you know, the site, the hellos, uh, maybe how we do row monitors, et cetera. Uh, so once we get the final list uh, later, this our staff uh, will be able to work with our senior officers and see, can we do something with this or um, will it be kind of the, the luck of the draw uh, we also encouraging our to be present at a masquerade um, as part of a, a tribute to our seniors. And so we know we're getting signups for that as well. Uh, just want to emphasize that a lot of information is going directly to the seniors because they are adults or adult-ish and they are responsible. 
However, the best thing is to be in touch with your senior so that you know what information they're getting and can follow up as well as get the newsletter, go to the student page um, on the DVHS website or the homepage. So in terms of how to get a ticket to attend the graduation ceremonies, somebody's asking, must have come in late. I myself knew what time that notice was coming out and that my student was gonna have to choose and my student did not choose in time. So I'll be attending the 1030 graduation quite happily or 10 o'clock or whatever it is. Um, but it was the students that needed to select. So if your student has not yet selected or communicated with you, please communicate with them. They do need to select the early morning session <laughs> or the mid morning session because that's what's left. And um, that is where they can uh, request up to four tickets to attend. And um, the tickets will be given out once they complete the senior checkout. Um, and so, a, a, someone will not be able to come into our stadium unless they have a ticket. Uh, so I just want to be very clear. It is not open. Uh, we are doing everything we can accommodate, uh, but we all know, um, you know, we have restrictions just based on the spacing guidelines. Uh, so. Okay. So another question um, has to do with pictures. Uh, will students be able to take pictures on the field after graduation? And I guess this category could be, are there going to be any formal picture opportunities or are they, um, you know, informal? And if mm -hmm. informal, whether it's family or friends, what will be allowed in terms of taking pictures at graduation, after graduation, et cetera, on the field? To start, we will have Studio One photography present and taking professional photos as students are um, walking down the street, so they'll be able to stop, take their photo, uh, and th those will be available through Studio One. In terms of after graduation, uh, because the way the field will be set, chairs, including the track, everywhere as part of spacing, there really isn't a whole lot of room on the field um, for individuals to congregate. Plus, we have to keep our six feet of separation um, across family pod. So it, it makes it very challenging for, um, for this to happen. However, luckily, because we have time in between our events, I know families are gonna wanna take pictures probably around campus or different areas, um, whether it's before or after, depending on the ceremony. And uh, our campus is large enough for 400 students in each ceremony to be able to do that. And so we are excited for our families to have that opportunity, um, not be rushed out uh, and not be policed outside of distancing um, in terms of what they can and can't do. And so I firmly believe in graduation as a family event. I love graduations and I think it's important that uh, we're able to do as much as we can to honor um, you know, the student and make the memories. Now, friends taking pictures with one another, I'm going to recommend probably not under the purview of the school, but what families and friends do outside of uh, that is for them to decide. And so um, I just wanna be clear when on this, we are really gonna be holding to the, the distancing and there's enough time embedded before and after of our ceremonies for families to find that right picture spot, whether it's at the marquee, on the awkward steps, outside the stadium, et cetera. Uh, there's plenty of room for families to spread out for that um, and not be rushed out after uh, the ceremony. But in terms of on the field, uh, the way the setup is going to be, that's gonna be really hard because we can't move the chairs. And so I'm going to encourage families to plan accordingly before or after um, somewhere else on campus other than the field. Thank you. And we have a senior asking and confirming they are still allowed to decorate their caps, correct? That sounds great. As long as it's appropriate, there's nothing correct. like that would violate normal rules. You can decorate your caps. Correct. Um, I, I put this in the chat, but just want to clarify the graduating senior themselves do not need a ticket to attend. However, they must fill out the form saying they will attend and then they get four tickets beyond that. So the senior doesn't Correct. count in the four. You can have four for your family and encourage Correct. everyone else to live stream. Yes. And so it will we, be recorded also so they can go back yes. and watch it at a later point as well. 
we will have the videos up on our website once they get converted into a movie and uh, then they will forever live um, for a period of time on our on our website and you know seniors just for the seniors that are going to be listening now or, or watching this in the future there will be a lot of the direct information coming to you once we nail down what our final setup is uh, what there will not be a rehearsal. We are not planning a rehearsal because the guidelines state it's best not to do one. And so uh, there'll be very clear information that will go to you um, and within each ceremony as we nail that down. So you'll know kind of what row or seat number you may have. We're looking at all being very specific, uh, but I would plan on at least an hour before the ceremony, you'll have to arrive to whatever point we decide um, to um, get everyone lined up and, and ready and go over directions for. Great, thank you, that's helpful. Um, are there any restrictions on what people are allowed to bring on graduation? And I'm guessing this is for parents, but it could be students as well. Balloons, noisemakers, signs, whatever they might wanna do to call themselves out for their kids? So traditionally, uh, we don't want any noisemakers so we can hear everyone's name uh, and not have any distractions. We know that the weather, who knows how warm it's gonna be. And so umbrellas um, are not necessarily a block someone's view. Um, signs, you know, they can go up, but only when that student is being called and immediately down because you never know who's behind you. With the six feet of distancing, uh, there's, there is a room, right? Uh, and so people standing up or sitting down, um, it may not block someone's view this year because there's a lot of room in between. And so, uh, I just want to be clear. We want to be able to hear everyone's name. Uh, obviously I suggest water cause we never know how, how warm it's going to be. Our gates will open. We're thinking around an hour and a half before each event. Uh, we think that might be enough time to get everyone in, but we're still working on that. Uh, so we're we're still in the planning stages. So all that will go out to families. We're hoping about two weeks before, and then definitely the week of, with more specific information uh, that you know is needed for for seniors to be ready. So again, talk to your senior. Make sure you're paying attention. I will be talking to my senior and every bit of information I can gather, I will work with Mrs. Mattingly to have on that student senior graduating class section and, and in our newsletter. Um, somebody is asking about final transcripts to send to colleges. I think that's something that is probably with um, counseling should be providing that information. I, I do know uh, the turnaround for grades is very quick at the end of this year, just the way the, the instructional calendar is. And I believe within roughly seven or eight days of the last day of school, uh, we will be able to get those out to the colleges after students have filled out um, the form and where they need to go. But my understanding from our counseling department is within a week, roughly a week, uh, that will get taken care of. But if there are any questions, uh, please contact the counseling office. Uh, Jane Ramponi will be able to answer that in regards to transcripts. Okay, and then more specifically, can they bring flowers and balloons? I assume as long as it's not affecting anybody else's view. So balloons may Correct. be a problem if you're holding them and they're blocking other people's views. So really, 360 look around and make sure you're not affecting anyone's experience and it will be a shorter yes. graduation experience than normal right so we really I, sure we don't have any issues. I would ex yes I would actually expect our ceremony to be an hour give or take five to ten minutes on either side depends on how fast the names get read how fast we're able you know we walk in but like I said earlier um, graduation is memorable and I want it to be authentic. I want it to be real. I want our students and families to enjoy it. So this is not something I want to rush, but I want us to embrace and be part of this, this celebration for our students. And so I'm trying to make it as memorable as possible under the guidelines we have, which as everyone knows, is more strict than before COVID, but we're still able to make it happen, which we're excited about. Okay, and I think, uh, oh, our name's going to be read in alpha order. 
for those that are attending that particular ceremony? As of right now, that is the plan. Uh, we will alphabetize and seat students. Um, however, we are not 100% final on that. Like I said, trying to be flexible. We're trying to see um, based on our staff science. And so once we get that, we will um, we'll look at the staff and see if their name reading component and if we can make that happen um, in the next month. So uh, no more maybe next week. Uh, and see what direction that may take. Okay. We may try to put together an FAQ based on what people have provided. And the FAQ will often say things like, as of now, um, and mm -hmm. please check with your student and updates coming soon. So if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, if you don't visit the website, this is a good time to familiarize yourself or subscribe and start paying attention. We'll also do what we can to post on social media. Um, we're running close to the end of our half hour that we promised. I know that there are a couple questions about prom uh, or ball or whatever we're calling it. Um, same question about students being able to take pictures on the field. Um, I assume they're referring to just informal. At, do you want to say something about that? I have a, a follow up comment. We we ask that students are mindful of the distancing and the masking, and we will make everything happen as long as we can follow the distancing and the masking. Okay. Uh, that is the requirement for us to be able to have these events. And we are excited to have these events. We know it's not normal to be a few feet away from each other, but we really need to, to make this happen so we can continue with the events for our seniors um, as we go through the rest of this year. So however that looks like with pictures, uh, we can make that happen, but uh, we definitely have to be mindful and follow the distancing and mask rules. So how does that work? And this is really gonna put you on the spot, Evan, so I'm sorry. Um, but if people are on a sports team or in a cohort or you know are bubbling, how do we address that? Are we just gonna be assume, unless you're a direct twin sibling, you're not together or are we gonna if so when when it comes to um, contact tracing one of the the most important things i've learned in a handful of letters that you have received from me everyone's received from me this year is six feet of separation and if students stay six feet apart when we go into contact tracing we do not have a level of concern and so when it comes to cohorting, as we know, a lot of our ath athletics uh, team are, are happening right now, and it's hard for them to be sick apart. So if someone, you know, comes down with COVID, then that whole team is going to be taken out, right? And then there's the 10-day um, quarantine period. So when it comes to these events, by staying six feet apart, doesn't matter what cohort you're in or what's going on if you're staying distant you are not jeopardizing that team or um, each other and that's why i am stressing six feet of separation and mask are the number one thing to keep us going we have been phenomenal this year and we can continue this for the last five weeks um, it's very important that 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 is being followed and i would like to remind our seniors we're lucky we're able to do senior uh, masquerade on the 14th and then three weeks until graduation. But if that was any sooner and there was an outbreak, we wouldn't be able to have a graduation. It would have to be at some other time. And so to really be mindful about what we do and how we operate so we can enjoy the events, we keep our family safe, our friends safe. Um, and so that's how, uh, the only thing I can stress is six feet and masks, will in a really good place. I think the final question, will DVHS be tracking how many people are vaccinated at graduation or prom or will that have an effect on anything? As of right now, that is something we are not doing. Uh, this would be something that is up to our school board. Uh, if our school board decides that that is something we are going to do, then um we will follow that but as of right now that is not a a direction we are going okay
I think that was the last question. If you have not registered for prom slash ball, it may not be what you your seniors would have liked to have experienced as in a traditional in a building, et cetera. But this looks like it's gonna be a really fun event. We've got over 250 registered. We have room for everybody. We're hoping at least four to 600 will participate and it's short enough. There's music, there's a entertainer. There's, as you mentioned, the- um, there's space. Yeah. It's going to so be a it, nice time. It's a great way for them to reconnect before the ceremony, before they all start to disperse for college. So we really encourage everybody to try to encourage your senior to attend and have fun. It's only a few hours and it's outside. So um, really try to encourage them to attend and May 1st, the tickets go up it's in price. And the tickets, by the way, it is not remotely a fundraising event. They are we, we really actually need about 400 to attend to break even. If we get more than 400, they can add more fun activities and decorations and other things. Um, there hasn't been fundraising for this class for a year and a half. So that is why um, the, the price is what it is because it literally addresses the cost and particularly in COVID. Um, in terms of a dress code, Mr. Powell, I know that it's formal, semi-formal, Will there be details going out in advance with any, you know, restrictions like shorts or denim or whatever? I, you know, I will leave that up to our senior officers and what would like for our, our senior class. The only thing I do, and same with graduation, um, stilettos, high heels, anything with a point, you know, like a, a point on the back of a, a shoe um, should not be worn. Um, it just an ankle could get twisted uh, just the way the material is of the turf and the track and so i encourage everyone to wear something comfortable something that's supportive um, and uh, we don't we don't want anyone to have to be barefoot because of a shoe or you know something that looks nice you can bring them for pictures but i would not suggest being able to walk um you know around in them you want an extra pair of shoes absolutely uh, but I understand, um, you know, sometimes shoes are bought for pictures. By all means, take the pictures with them, but I, I cannot have you walking around with them. But other than that, for dress code, I will let our seniors um, determine what, what they would like. Um, okay, so it's at a minimum, though, it would be at a minimum what school dress code is. But Correct. it is yes. the senior class has decided they want a formal, semi-formal, and semi-formal brings in a lot of options. Nobody has to get a suit or a tuxedo. Nope. Business casual can work, but yes. a lot of kids want to dress up. Now, I want to go back to what you just said about bare feet. Would bare feet be allowed, or are you saying people are required to bring a shoe that will remain on their foot <laughs> that is not a stiletto? Good, good follow up. <laughs> yes, students have to wear shoes. Uh, that is the dress code, uh, but stilettos, um, change be, of shoes yes there yeah. should be a change but if someone wants to take pictures you know and change back and forth that's fine um, i will respect that uh, these shoes have to be worn um, on campus okay so i think that's going to conclude our event we will um, post this and share the link out for those that couldn't make it or joined late um, mr powell is very busy you are welcome to contact him the senior officers counseling mr bowen with questions Feel free also to send me questions at dvhsptsa at gmail.com. I'll help compile them and hopefully put together an FAQ that Mrs. Mattingly and we can post so that people can go back and find some of these obscure answers and questions as well. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for attending. Appreciate the question. Thank you, Heidi, again. Really appreciate it. My pleasure.